Hello and welcome back to the Killer Keyboard channel. Today I'll be reviewing the Akko Jelly Black and Silver Linear switches and unboxing their Dracula keycap set. This video is not sponsored, but thank you for sending me these products. When you receive these switches, they come in a nice box that have the specs on the back. Each box contains 45 switches, so you need two boxes to fit anything over a 60%. The Jelly Blacks come in at a very budget price of $11.99 USD and the Silvers cost $13.99. Opening up the box, they are laid out in individual grids with a plastic tray. I think the packaging deserves some appreciation as this protects the pin from bending during shipping. Let's get straight into the stock sound test with my Zoom 65. Both feature a PC upper housing and a nylon bottom housing that is 3-pin. Both have a POM stem where the black is 12.3mm and the silver is 13.7mm in length. And they both have a 22mm long spring but the black has an operating force of 50 and the silver is 43. The units they use is GF measuring force, not girlfriend. I'm more used to buying spring weight in grams, so if someone knows if 50 girlfriends is 50 grams, let me know in the comments. They are extremely light though. The travel distance on the Jelly Silver is significantly shorter with a nice bottom out feeling. In general, I like the Silvers better. Now let's take a look at the wobble test with other switches. I can say that they have the same amount of movement when you compare the Jelly Black and Jelly Silvers. This isn't a fair comparison because some of the other switches are filmed but just to give you an idea. There is a decent amount of wobble going back and forth as well as left and right. I would usually film this level of wobble in switches but I'm going to leave them as is because I ran out of films. Alright, let's loop these bad boys up with some Crytox 205G0 and silicon oil for the springs. I opened up the switches using the Gateron switch cracker and had a pretty hard time getting the top housing apart from the bottom housing. Every switch was like this and my thumb almost fell off when I finished opening up 135 switches. They did send me two packs of the blacks and only one pack of the silvers. I took a closer look on the leaf and there's a little bit of lube where the stem legs would make contact with the leaf. Definitely a reason why they feel so smooth stock. I then chuck the springs in the bag and squeeze some silicon oil in. You can be pretty specific with how many drops you want, but since silicon oil is way cheaper than Crytox 105, I always bought a decent amount just to ensure the springs don't sing. Then I just give the springs a really good rub. Give your meat a good old rub. That's it. Nice and hot. I use a loop station from Laser Ninja and it speeds up the process quite a bit. There's a few ways of lubing switches, but I've stuck to my method for a while and it works for me. I get a thin layer of lube on my brush by painting it back and forth on the cap. I just get enough to make sure the brush is wet. Then I stroke the left side of the rail twice, flip the brush onto the other side and repeat on the adjacent switch. I do the left side for the whole loop station and simply just flip it at the end and keep doing the left side, which is now the right side, but upside down. This workflow allows me to work quicker, but of course you can loop both sides of the rails and move on to the next. If you wish to film your switches, this is the time to do it. Next goes on the springs and wa wow. The box design on these stems won't allow you to use the stem holders, so I use a jewel picker which has these little prongs. For lubing the stems, I get the same amount of lube on the brush as before and just stroke each side of the stem until I think there is an even surface. If you use this method, I'm sure you won't over lube your switches. The way you lube your switches is also your preference. I typically only like a little bit of lube because I want to preserve as much of the switch characteristics as possible. Too much lube may make it sound muted, so I just apply lube on all four sides of the switch, including the legs, and apply some on the stem pole also. The last step is to put on the top housing, and due to the springs being very long, 
I had a quite a hard time trying to finesse the box design through the top housing. You just have to get it in the right angle. At last, all the top housings are on and I get to do this very satisfying pushy thing with my thumbs as a reward for looming switches. So 135 switches took me about five hours. Um, let's take a listen to the comparison between lubed and unlubed. All right, let's share some of my thoughts. I think the Jelly Silver comparison was a bit scuffed because I don't know why I was typing way harder after it was lubed. I would describe both switches to be on the high pitch with a clacky sound profile. The blacks have a harsher sound that is more thacky and the silvers have a bit more of a pop to it. Clacky plus poppy equals clocky. I don't know if that made any sense, but take another listen and try tune into the space bar. The silvers being longer in pole length is very noticeable when typing. This would be advantageous if you're gaming or trying to type faster as there is less travel distance to the bottom. Echo states that the silvers have 1mm less total travel distance, give or take 3mm, and I can agree with that. Both switches are very smooth unlubed and when you add a little bit of 205G0 ourselves, these definitely compete with some of the smoothest linears out there. I think the smoothest linear I have today is the Gatoron CJ. So the smoothest I've experienced is a 10 out of 10. My subjective rating of both the Jelly switches would be about 8 out of 10. To chuck another reference in there, I'd rate the lubed Gatoron Black Ink V2s a 7 out of 10. The pricing of these switches are extremely competitive when we look at the cost per switch. The black is 27 cents a switch and the silver is 31 cents a switch prices in USD. So if you're after a budget linear with killer smoothness that's unlubed, definitely give the Akko Jelly switches a go. They also sent me some keycaps, so let's check that out. This is the Akko Dracula Castle in their ASA profile. I have yet to type on this profile, so I'm quite curious to see how it feels. In this red box, they include all the novelty keys that you can mix and match between grey and red. The keycaps are made from PBT and is also double shot. It does come in a neat plastic magnetic box, but to be 100% honest with you guys, I don't put them back in the box and rather just chuck it in a Ziploc bag. This is however a nice way to ship items and shows you that they put some effort into the packaging. The set you're looking at is $59.99 USD. The sidewall thickness is 1.5mm, which is a little thicker than our GMK set that offers 1.3mm. I think the light grey contrasts the dark grey really well and looks great. Not sure if I like the red accents though. If SA profile and cat profile had a baby, this is what it looked like. There is a slight scoop to the keys which moulds to your fingers nicely. The height of the keycap is not as high as SA and is very comfortable to type on. Let's take a listen to how they sound. Now taking a look at the novelty keys, we have some pretty crispy pictures of cats, bats, ghosts and what have you.
The consistency of the double shot is pretty good, but I can spot out some bolder letters such as the S and the question mark. So just a reminder, Akko does have a shop on Amazon and I'll link everything in today's video there. And just to note, these links are affiliated which will support the channel. If you like this review, support Killer Keyboards with a like and sub. I'll leave you guys with the KBD67 Lite sound test and thank you for watching, I'll see you on the next one.